Hi everybody and welcome to part 9 of my map tool tutorial series. This one's going to deal with information tokens. Now information tokens for me are little tokens that I put on the hidden layer of map tool that I can see that contain things that I need to know. So I use these for room information such as what do I need to know when the PCs enter room 1? What do I need to know about room 1 as they move about it? What specific notes do I need to know that have to happen in room one for the rest of the game to go the way I foresee it in my head. Uh, specifically though, these tokens aren't really for combat. They might remind me that a combat's supposed to happen, but when a combat actually comes into play in a role-playing session, I don't usually look at the information tokens. There's very little that I need in them for combat. And above all, the players can't see them. As I mentioned, these information tokens go on the hidden layer of map tool. So to get started on our first information token, the, I need to make sure I'm on the right level. So again, in order for me to have access to these, to use them for information and so that the players don't see them, I need to select the hidden layer up here in my upper right. And then I'm gonna go over to my library. Just like on my narrative outline, there's a certain marker that I really like for information, and it's just this simple gold information button. You can use either of these. I just kind of default to this one, and I drag it to the screen. Kind of like them to be big. I like to see what I'm clicking on, so I make it large, and I kind of have it near the number of the room that I'm on. So here I have my information token on my hidden layer. The next step that I need to do to set this up is I need to prepare this for actually having information in it. So again, you can either right click and go to edit, or you can just double click, and it opens up our token. And here we can start inputting information that we need into it. So I have room one. The very first thing I need to do is name my token. So I'm going to go to my Crypt of the Everflame outline, and here I have the information for Room 1, the Entry Hall, even the CR of the Encounter, and the XP awarded as dictated by Paizo. So I'm going to go back here, Control A, Control V. And now I have my Entry Hall. If I go to my token layer and hover over it, Nothing happens yet because I don't have any information in there. So I'm going to go back in here and Alt-Tab back to this. And I'm going to copy everything that I already have to put in here. Now, this is the information specifically for the room. After this, we have human skeletons, but that's for combat. So I specifically want to deal with this. If you look, I've already input the formatting that I want for this. So this section right here is flavor text for the players that must be read when they enter. So if you notice, because it's HTML, I want this in italics to tell me to read it. So left caret, lowercase i, right caret to start the italics, and then left caret, forward slash i, uh, right caret to say that this is where the italics ends. And then down here, just to set this aside, this is where creatures begin, and I like to bold this part, so I start with a left caret B, right caret, and then at the end of my uh, colon, I put left caret slash B, right caret, for bold. So I already have that together. I'm going to select all of this, get it out of here, control X, alt tab back, and I want it to go into notes, so I go control V. Remember, if you hit close, it will not save this information in the token, and this will be empty. So I want to keep these changes, so I click OK. If I go to my token layer and hover over it, now when I get to that token, I change from my normal mouse cursor to a pointer finger, and if I look down here in the lower left corner when I hover over that, it gives me the name of the token. If I click on it, I have all this information. You'll notice that I left out one step, though, and I did that on purpose as a reminder. I left out the font size. Now, if your eyes are really good and you don't mind leaning close and squinting to make sure you catch everything, then you can just leave it as normal. I, however, do not like that, so I need to set my font size. And I never remember this off the top of my head, 
So I'm going to go to Select Map, and I'm going to go back to my Adventure Progression because I know I set the text size in here. So I'm going to copy this, this font size equals quotation mark 4 inside the carrots. Click OK. Go back to my upper level where my information token is. Go back to my hidden layer, double click, go to the beginning, whoops, and I apparently did not hit copy correctly. So close, I don't want to save that. Go back, try this again, select, control C, okay. I'm on my hidden layer, go back into here, hopefully this works this time. And there we go. I've now set my font size, okay to save it. Go back to my token layer, check to make sure it's good. And there we go. I can see this much better. I'm going to go ahead and do one more with you. And to get number two started, I'm going to make life really simple, simple for me. I'm going to select my token, and I'm just going to copy the entire token by clicking Control-C while it's selected. I'm going to hover over here with my mouse and go Control-V. And click and drag it. And now I have my token that I can set up for room two. I'm going to open it. Alt-Tab to my tutorial series, copy Room 2, the Maze of Pits, Control-A, Control-V, come back here, and all of this stuff I need to know. There's actually quite a lot here, so I'm going to select all the way down here, and I'm going to include the trap in here too, and I'll come back and tell you in a moment what else I might do. Control-X. Select everything after the font size, control V. Remembering that I've got my text editing, such as bold down here with the carrots and the B. Uh, I've added underlining here. So you'll notice that I have bold and underline, and then it stops here. So I should see a bold underline section. Hit OK, because I want to save that. Go to my token layer, click it to make sure it worked. And there we go. I've got my italicized stuff I want to read. I've got my underline bolded pit trap and my bolded treasure. Now what I might do if each of these traps here was something different, I might do an individual token or I might make a trap token in another program and put them on the hidden layer so if each trap was a different trap I could put this specific trap information in each one. But they're all the same so I don't need to worry about that. So there's my first two rooms. I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting up the rest of this and I'll come back to you in a moment when I'm done with my information level. So with that, I've finished all of the information for every room that I have on this level. So if I go to the token level, I can just click on each room and their information token and see everything I need to know about this. Uh-oh, I have an editing error here. I forgot to slash I. Come back and fix that later. Now the last part that I have after room 12 is part 3, the lower level. So though this is part of my narrative outline, I actually need to know everything about the lower level right here as I go down to the lower level. So even though this isn't a room, I'm going to click that, paste it there. I'm going to take part three, the lower level, paste, and put that in this box. And this information is specifically for me now. So I have all of that. And I am done. So I'm going to go back and do a few edits. I'm going to put in the second floor. But that's pretty much it for putting in the information tokens for this layer. Again, you edit the hidden layer by being on the hidden layer. And then when you're playing to see what's written, you click on the token layer. And that's how you go back and forth between these. So that is it for now. Thank you for watching this video. And I will see you soon in part 10. Thank you very much.